Welcome back, everybody, for another Sunday... Wait, that's that's not right. So it's the same, but it's different. It's 2-2-2-gate Tuesday. And this uh, delayed edition of the 6-gate is viewer's choice. The Big Body Battle. So let's take a quick look at who the viewer chosen competitors will be for this round. Uh, leading off with the Traxxas TRX-4 Defender that is Ironsides. Next up is the smallest big body of the group, the SCX-10-3, Colonel Mustard. Uh, third entrant for the day, uh, started as a gatekeeper, sort of became an enduro. It's the banana. And closing out this week's field, the defenderized element. Uh, so new it hasn't even seen rock in its current configuration, the Landkeeper Gate Rover. So let's uh, get straight into the course uh, for this round. Uh, the host area is Sleeping Giant, which if we were rating this on the black diamond scale, like a ski run, I would say Sleeping Giant is a three black diamond obstacle, or series of obstacles. As one would expect, there are six gates. The start line, which is not a gate, uh, is out on the flats and uh, climbs up near the Sleeping Giant himself on the right-hand side uh, up to gate one, uh, during which competitors will travel just under uh, one meter forward and almost six-tenths of a meter vertically. It is a pretty steep section. Uh, the transfer from gate one to gate two is a horseshoe shape left hand turn around the giant. Uh, there's a bit of vertical drop there. Uh, gate two is sort of nestled down in the rocks. They'll move back out onto the flats for a moment before a little boomerang turn up through gate three. You'll note a large rock uh, positioned directly in between the two gates. And as out of frame to the right, there is a pond. This will be a particularly difficult section to line up. Uh, it's got up and down loss and gain of elevation uh, transitioning towards the long climb up towards gate four. A bit of a transitional phase between gate three and gate four. Uh, just a, a bit of vertical gain over a pretty long traverse up there. Uh, which is good because the transition down from gate four to gate five is is pretty much a drop where most of the 18 inches of vertical descent comes in the first shot there right out of gate four and then everything in the middle is side hill much the same story the transition from gate five to gate six uh, continues to just wrap around the backside of the sleeping giant uh, it's side hill almost all the way and gets particularly steep. There's not a lot of vertical loss. Uh, there's a good amount of space in between, but it's all irregular and it all wants to tip. And then uh, if they can clear gate six, it's just a pretty flat drive around to pass through the start gate, which is this week acting also as the finish gate. And on to the scoring, which is essentially unchanged from the base scoring profile. Each competitor gets two runs, and the total is the best score from the two runs, which now, as I see it and say it, realize it's confusing, so let's just clarify that. Only the lowest scoring run counts. The higher scoring run is discarded. And the points remain the same. Two points for a reverse, seven for a gate hit, and ten for a rollover. This week's gates our Crawler Canyon Unlimited, which is 14 inches, or at least our best approximation of 14 inches. And as returning viewers will know, there are no gate points, so a perfect score is zero. So here are the week's competitors ready and waiting, and they want to know who goes first, and how do we figure out who goes first? Well, the canyon has got a new tool, fabricated out of some plywood, a stub axle from a Traxxas Slash, and a couple bearings. It's our good friend the Spinny, and uh, whoever spin the Spinny lands on gets to go first, and it looks like it's that defenderized element. Here he is in all of his white-wheeled glory, who has not touched a rock 
in this current configuration. And yes, we made multiple changes. So he's gonna head up to the line knowing that historically, I don't think any competitor has put down an even remotely competitive run being the first rig out, particularly one that is untested as this one is. And uh, he pushes gate one off to the side. Uh, doesn't appear to be having too big of an issue um, ascending. Uh, is really trying to work out where the line is. Uh, it's so sharp there around the back of the giant that it's really tough to pull that line without using a reverse uh, because it is really off angle. And uh, his recent uh, respringing, trying to save himself from a reverse, but uh, couldn't get enough grip, so had to reverse anyway. So now coming up on gate three, which I forecast to be somewhat problematic uh, in its placement and kind of the orientation of it. He has flipped another gate, rolls down, but that's that was an okay roll. It's first run, you know, you're feeling it out. Um, he could have just actually taken that line straight through and saved the reverse because I th think he had cleared the gate before he rolled. Maybe he knows better than I do. But uh, a lot of getting stuck here. I think there might have been an uncounted reverse in there. The editors miss yet another one. This is just a drop after gate four, which is then just onto a side hill. And if the competitors get too far to their left, it's, it's really a side hill. Uh, then this here, the camera, again, doesn't really capture that angle well enough. Well, you can kind of see it now. He's at about, I don't know, maybe 40 degrees. And uh, now in practice, I don't think it's the foams. I, I, think, I think it's the springs. I think they're either too stiff or there's too much preload dialed in because it's now it's really trying to push the body over. It felt more stable before the spring change. Managing this pretty well. That's very off camber there. And tried to power out of it, but just a little bit too hop, top heavy. It's gonna come back again. Somehow didn't hit that marker on gate six pulls around to the line to finish up the first run with what's probably a pretty big number and while not the biggest uh, first out score we've seen uh, 10 points for five reverses 14 points for two gates and 10 points for one rollover for a total of 34 it's still pretty big so the wheel spins again to see who will go second and it lands on none other than the banana. Here sits the banana in all its glory, ready to go. And the pressure really is off for whoever goes second. I mean, you know the bar has been set pretty low. So just try to keep it relatively tight and pretty clean the steepest portion here. Very irregular. This is one of the more concentrated areas of river stone on the course. Well, I mean, part of Sleeping Giant is river stone. The other part is wafer thin chipped up concrete, uh, which was actually originally poured on top of that very river stone. I guess that's the way they used to do things. What you do is you you 
get yourself a bunch of river rock and uh, you put a layer of that down and then you pour inch and a half thick, very sandy, like you can almost break them over your knee. They're, they're a little tougher than like the washout from when they rinse out a cement mixer. So uh, they, they are yet though still tall enough to hang up on the diffs on uh, non-portal equipped vehicles, as we're seeing here. Uh, the banana has still somehow managed to not hit a gate and uh, didn't use reverse there either to get through gate three. It wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. We'll see how the short wheelbase manages this. He's gonna have to use some some wiggle motion, which puts him out pretty wide left. So uh, I think a reverse there was probably necessary because that right there is, that's pretty sideways. Bringing it around to gate five. It never really comes off of an angle. Uh, it's pretty much angled all the way from gate four through gate five, and then there's just a little bit of flat uh, in the transition right before gate six. And uh, if a competitor rolls in this section, as exhibited there by the banana, there's really no way out of it because that's a bowl. So, and he landed full turtle, so uh, there was no chance of powering back out of that one. It takes a little bit higher line. We'll see if that ends. But the higher line doesn't really put drivers in an advantageous position for gate six, which is really at a bad angle and has those slippery pipes down at the bottom. I think the banana managed it pretty well, particularly for a first run. And uh, slowly motors across the line. So the banana finishes clean of gates with just three reverses and one rollover for a total of 16 points, uh, putting him in the provisional lead, seeing as the first run is pretty poor. The spinner goes directly into action again and uh, lands over here on the uh, what would be the west side, which means Colonel Mustard will be up third next to last. And uh, he wastes no time heading straight to the line. Uh, the Colonel, as I think I've mentioned in, in prior videos, is, uh, belongs to a, a friend of the canyon. It isn't one of the... I mean, it lives here, but it's, it's not one of mine. I don't own this one. I did supply the tires. Those are... Uh, those are the tires that came on Ironsides when it came as an RTR, Canyon Trails. Uh, they are, had their tread blocks cut and the foams have been replaced with the two-stage foams from Pitbull. I don't remember what Pitbull tires I took them out of, but there are two-stage Pitbull foams in there and they are mounted on 2.2 inch wheels because the owner of the vehicle uh, was not paying attention to the Amazon descriptions accurately and uh, liked the look of the black on black beadlocks and bought 2.2s. And I said, you can return them. And he said, I'm just going to mount them. That's a thing, right? And I was like, yeah, stretching? Yeah, that's a thing. So uh, it's got 2.2 it's got wheels with 1.9 tires on them. And uh, as you, you'll see right here, it apparently helps because you don't get a lot of sidewall roll. So the sidewalls don't roll over. So it, of the three that have run so far, including the Colonel himself, definitely the most planted there across the side of the hill. Now, the Colonel is also loaded with brass at this point. There's so much brass on the underside of that thing. And uh, following the recommendations of good viewers such as yourselves, uh, the interior has been removed. 
my buddy was sick of the way the body mounts went, so we just put regular body mounts on it. And I realize now that I'm rambling, uh, the Colonel used just three reverses for six points on his first run, which puts him well out into the lead. So the arrow just points at the last competitor left, who is none other than Ironsides, the... We can't call it a stock defender anymore because it's not. Like, most of the stuff has been replaced. But it's been done, I think, very sensibly. I mean, as Jolly Green, who is not competing this week, and Ironsides both began their lives as RTR, TRX4 defenders. Uh, a lot more restraint has been shown in adding parts to to this guy. Uh, the tires are one of the biggest uh, performance changes. A uh, subscriber who has uh, been kind enough to send me parts in the past uh, offered to send me these tires when he sent a, uh, a bridge. I have another. So there's two rope bridges out on the course now. Uh, he sent these tires, and I thought I'll give him a try on uh, on this Defender. And wow, like like really, it was it was transformative, truly transformative. And uh, whenever uh, a set of tires gets freed up, so once these tires came in, uh, tires just started flying all over the place. A set of tires went here, a set of tires went there. I think four rigs ended up swapping tires. And uh, I think Ironsides benefited perhaps the most from that. So he finishes up his first round with just two reverses and one gate hit for a total of 11 points, putting him in second, which I think is a tremendous showing for the rig that I'm pretty sure has the highest center of gravity of the four. That will put the uh, Gate Rover back on the course for his second go. And as it's his first time out, I mean, the, the recommendation uh, from his fellow competitors down in the pit area is don't try to do too much. Just try to improve on your first run you know it's your first comp out uh, there's a lot of work that still needs done uh, nothing has been tuned take the take this as a as a learning experience because we're going up against you know everyone else here well no, no half the field. So the Colonel and Ironsides both went all the way through the raid. But the Banana has been in a couple, a couple, one? Has been in at least one six, I want to say two six gates previously. So maybe not an old hand at this, but it has some experience. These are literally the first rocks that the Gate Rover is wheeling on since the tire change and the spring change, and the foam change, and all the changes that were made. We're, so, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be lenient, let's say. Uh, he's most likely out of the money. Uh, he's, he's not gonna have a, I, I don't know if a podium finish in his future and on his wheels but gets a little too aggressive and once you tuck the back wheels up against that pipe you're stuck you got to take a little bit of a run at it and you know these are the things that he'll learn over time uh, no matter how he scores he look good doing it and the land keeping gate rover finishes out his second run with just five reverses for 10 points which is a Quite an improvement over his first effort. 
uh, which would put him in third for the moment, if if I'm if my memory is serving me correctly. So now the banana knows what he needs to do. Getting hung up a little here. Uh, I, I suppose I should point out. So we've got we've got two rigs out based off of element gatekeepers. They began both began as gatekeeper kits, the banana and the gate rope. Uh, the banana had its wheelbase shortened down to 12.3, so it's kind of more of an enduro. It does not have trailing arms on it. Uh, the gate rover retains the trailing arms, but they are both non-portal, straight axle, stealth, gearboxed, you know, elements. Then we've got the Axial, which is a thing, all the SCX-10-3 is a thing all to itself. And then we've got a Defender with all the Defender bits. It's got, you know, the unlockable dips and the two-speed and all the stuff. So we ended up with two straight axles and two portal axles. And I really did notice I mean, just in terms of, like, if there was a timed component to this week, uh, big advantage to the portals. Because I found the, the portal rigs, particularly, like, like, up that climb from the start line to gate one, uh, just, they just did it easier. Like, both, the iron sides and the kernel, both just fired right up that hill no problems and I would have thought that they would both have more issues here in that whole gate 4 to gate 6 area which is a lot of side hilling and some of it is pretty irregular but they both did it really well uh, unintentionally but the, uh, the gate layout unbeknownst to the planners, seems to have benefited portals, just incidentally. Again, the banana taking his time to get through the finish line and finishing up his second run with just two reverses, giving him a total of four points, which moves him out into the lead for the moment. The Colonel now up for his second run and knows that, like, his work is definitely cut out for him because two reverses, particularly with this spot right here, uh, the banana managed to get around it with one reverse. So, so the colonel knows what needs to be done and uh, went a little too aggressive at it and already employed a third reverse. So we got a little... We saw this with the, in, in the Vanquish versus Tranquish battle. We saw this with Argentum the Phoenix where it looked like he just got over-anxious. And, you know, I mean, nerves definitely come into play. Uh, the, the Colonel is definitely in the mix here. Doing really very well. Uh, he has only a little bit more wheel time. I mean, realistically, since the last round of mods went on this rig, the wheel time has been minimal. There has not been a lot of testing done to this. Uh, it got SSD portal covers, uh, it got weights, it got a bunch of the interior taken out. Like So his CG moved down quite a lot and it's noticeable by how it drives, but not a lot of 
practice time and has not been in a six gate yet. So this is his first six gate. And uh, I mean, he knew that he was pretty much out of the points for his second run. So kind of threw in the towel on that one. Ends run two. Six points for three reverses and a single rollover for a 16, which is not an improvement over his first effort. That will bring us to the final run from the final competitor of the day. Ironsides coming out on those bizarre, like in crawler terms, bizarre axial rip saws. They are 4.3 inches tall which means they don't classify as a, as a class one tire because you can't go above 4.19. And most folks that are buying a tire that is not a class one uh, look for something in that like 120 millimeter, like 4.7, four and three quarter inch range. Which, like, I mean, you know, if you're going to get a non-class one, what J Concepts is now calling class two, uh, almost all those tires are like 4.7 inches. So the Ripsaw is really an oddball in there in the middle. But as it turns out, at least on a portal vehicle, it is as big of a performance change as putting on portal weights for this thing. Look look at the side hill angle on that Traxxas TRX4 Defender. Also, take into consideration the speed, the relative speed at which Ironsides is navigating this course. Like that was that was downright brisk. Uh, Ironsides making something of a clinic out of that run and crosses the line having used one reverse. I think that's our second time we've seen a finisher land on two points. So that'll bring up the final scores for the round. The Gate Rover opened up with that non-stellar 34, followed with the Banana at 16 points. Colonel Mustard then dropped his six, and Ironsides finished the first run with a score of 11. In run two, the Gate Rover put up a 10, which gives him a final score of 10. We dropped the 34. The Banana came out for the second run and put down a 4, so obviously we're going to keep the 4 and not the 16. The Colonel stumbled on his second run with a 16, so he'll be keeping his run one score of a 6. Then Ironsides came out and put on a clinic and ran a 2, giving him a final score of 2 which I think has only been done once before. So there you have him, right there. No one more surprised than I. Ironsides, the TRX4 Defender, the winner of today's six gate. And after the runs, Ironsides was telling me the secrets to his success, which is number one, loads of brass. He's got 93 gram portal weights at each corner. And number two, axial rip saws. I, I really cannot express how much they transformed the handling of this rig. Like, it's night and day. And there it is, his first win of anything. And he wins the big body battle. And all the competitors, Ironsides most of all, and I as well, Sincerely, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you in the next one.